let us keep working with Morgan's experiments with purple and vestigial which are linked that is they are located on the same chromosome and this happens to be chromosome 2 of Drosophila and here we have a dihybrid individual uh, in the F1 generation who has one chromosome with the genotype purple plus vestigial plus and another chromosome with the genotype purple vestigial when this individual undergoes meiosis they are going to produce um, because these chromosomes will segregate they will produce one type of gamete which is purple plus vestigial plus and that's a parental genotype and another gamete will receive the other chromosome and will have the genotype purple vestigial which is also a parental genotype and that explains why about 50 percent of the gametes are going to be um, to have the the wild type parental phenotype and another 50 percent approximately gametes will have the um, mutant parental um, genotype however we do know that in 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 Morgan's experiment recombinants were produced so purple plus vestigial was produced at about 5% frequency and purple vestigial plus was also produced at about 5% frequency so it's not that recombinants are never produced it's just that recombinants are rarer than what you would expect with independent assortment and what might these recombinant gametes or recombinant chromosomes look like well since in the P, uh, purple plus vestigial recombinant genotype you have both the purple plus and vestigial alleles it must be that part of the chromosome is blue and the other part of the chromosome is yellow and similarly for the other recombinant gamete the other recombinant genotype it must be that part of the chromosome is yellow and the other part is blue and in order to obtain these recombinant uh, genotypes therefore we must exchange genetic material between chromosomes and the process of exchanging genetic material between chromosomes is called crossing over let's say we are um, in a cell that's about to undergo meiosis and so we are in gap phase 2 g2 after the synthesis phase has completed and therefore the chromosomes have been replicated and here's our chromosome with purple plus and vestigial plus alleles and we have another chromosome the homolog which carries the um, purple and vestigial alleles during prophase these chromosomes are going to condense to form chromatids furthermore the homologous dyads are going to synapse 
or align and they will stick to each other with this complex of proteins called the synaptonemo complex and we still have the purple plus alleles and the vestigial plus alleles on the dyad resulting from the blue chromosome likewise we have uh, purple and vestigial on the other dyad and just to remind you of some terminology these two chromatids that are the result of DNA replication are called sister chromatids and if you look at chromatids that um, belong to different homologs um, and are not copies of each other then they're called non-sister chromatids now when you have this tetrad during prophase one sometimes and fairly rarely what might happen is that the non-sister chromatids can form this structure called this X-shaped X structure called the chiasmata and this occurs when there is a double strand break or you know the phosphodiester bonds holding the DNA molecule together uh, break and these two non-sister chromatids can exchange um, genetic material so that one of the sister um, chromatids becomes a chimera of the blue and yellow chromosomes and the other non-sister chromatid also becomes a chimera. As a result, we have one chromosome chromatid with purple plus vestigial plus or a parental genotype one chromatid which is purple plus and vestigial so a recombinant genotype this is one of the partners that underwent cr crossing over and the other partner is going to be purple and vestigial plus another recombinant genotype and the fourth chromatid will have the parental genotype of purple and vestigial both the mutant alleles during meiosis 1 the non-sister chromatids are going to segregate giving us one daughter cell that looks like this and so it has purple plus vestigial plus purple plus and vestigial and the other daughter cell is going to look like this and this will have purple and vestigial plus so a recombinant genotype and the parental genotype purple and vestigial now during meiosis 2 
the sister chromatids are going to separate, giving us the following gametes. We will have a purple plus vestigial plus gamete from the first daughter cell and a purple plus vestigial from the second daughter cell we will get a purple vestigial plus recombinant genotype and the last gamete is going to have purple and vestigial parental genotype and therefore from one meiosis fifty percent of the gametes are recombinant however this does not mean that 50% of all gametes are going to be recombinant and that's because crossing over is a rare process. And in Morgan's data, we saw that only about 10% of the gametes or the progeny of the test cross were recombinant. And that means that only one in five meioses had crossing over between purple and vestigial. To summarize, even if two genes are on the same chromosome, that is they are linked you can still generate new combinations of alleles that is recombinant genotypes because of crossing over crossing over happens during meiosis one when the non-sister dyads synapse or stick to each other and non-sister chromatids can form this x-shaped structure called the chiasmata and exchange genetic material so that you get um, chromosomes or, or uh, chromatids that are partly from one non-sister chromatid and partly from the other non-sister chromatid and if crossing over occurs if there is one crossing over event um, during a meiosis that will generate 50 percent recombinant gametes however the the total number of recombinant gametes or um, progeny recombinant progeny in a test cross will be less than 50 percent in fact much less than 50 percent because most meioses would not have crossing over events